Hello. In this and the next video, we are going to derive the normal modes of vibration of sulfur hexafluoride by the Kim method. In this video, we are going to derive the stretching motions, and in part two, we are going to derive the bending motions. The first step in the Kim method is to draw a diagram of the problem, and since the octahedron is a cubic group, we first set up a cube with edge length of two. And we also arrange the axes so that the x-axis is going left to right, the z-axis is going up, and the positive y-axis is going back into the board, and the origin is at the center of the cube. Next, we want to label each of the six fluorine atoms, R1 through R6, and we want to assign each of these fluorine atoms particular coordinates. So we'll set up the first fluorine atom to be at the center of the right face of the cube. So that gives it the coordinates x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. And we're going to use the fact that we can think of a point also as a description of a vector going from the origin to that particular point. The second fluorine atom, R2, we'll put at the left end of the x-axis. So since it's at the leftmost face of the cube, its coordinates are minus 1, 0, and 0. And we can continue. Uh, if we have a fluorine atom at the center of the back face, that gives it an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of 1. For a fluorine atom at the center of the front face, we'll call that one R4. It's going to have an x-coordinate of 0, a y-coordinate of minus 1, and a z-coordinate of 0. The fifth fluorine atom is at the center of the top face of the cube. So that gives its x and y-coordinates to be 0 because it's directly above the origin. But it has a z-component of 1. Last but not least, we'll have a fluorine atom at the center of the bottom face, R6. And its coordinates will be 0, 0, and minus 1. So notice, once we have our coordinates, that the only non-zero coordinates we ever have are either plus 1 or a minus 1. Our first stretching motion has A1G symmetry. And we notice from the character table for the octahedral group OH that the basis function is listed as x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these coordinates and evaluate the basis function at that particular point. And that value of the basis function will turn out to be the coefficient for the particular vector. So for example, for R1, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to simply 1. So our coefficient for R1 is a 1, so we just write it without the coefficient. Similarly for R2, if we evaluate x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we notice that x is equal to minus 1, x squared is a positive 1. Therefore, the coefficient of R2 is going to be a positive 1. Similarly for R3, x is equal to 0, but y is now equal to 1, so the y squared part gives us 1, so x squared plus y squared plus z squared at this particular point is equal to 1, so the coefficient of R3 is a 1. And if we continue for each of the other points, we see that in each case, we end up with a evaluation of x squared plus y squared plus z squared as being equal to 1, so each of the coefficients is a 1. So we can write down very quickly the totally symmetric stretching motion that has A1G symmetry is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5 plus R6. And we can interpret the positive coefficients as, since all the vectors have the same uh, phase of coefficient as a positive number, it means that they all get bigger simultaneously and all get smaller simultaneously. 
The next stretching motions have EEG symmetry, and EEG is a doubly degenerate irreducible representation. So let's look at the first basis function that's listed, which is 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared. And again, we're going to go through all six points, R1 through R6, and we're going to evaluate the basis function at each of these particular points, and that value for the basis function will be the coefficient of the vector. So for example, for R1, we see that x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. So if we evaluate this function, we get a value of minus 1. So our coefficient for R1 is equal to minus 1 here. Similarly, for R2, the value of x is minus 1. If I square minus 1, I get positive 1. Minus 1 in front, we evaluate this entire function because z and um, y are also equal to 0. So that again gives me a coefficient of minus 1. So we have minus R1 minus R2. For point R3, x and z are equal to 0, but y is equal to 1. We evaluate it inside the function because we have a minus y squared. That gives our coefficient to be minus 1, so we have minus R3. For R4, the y-coordinate is minus 1. We square it, we get a positive 1. The minus 1 in front means that its coefficient is a minus 1. So here we have minus R1, minus R2, minus R3, minus R4. Now when we get to point R5, it's a little more interesting because now we have that x and y are equal to 0, but z is equal to 1. So we square z, again have 1, and now we multiply by a 2. So here now our coefficient is a positive 2. So we have plus 2 r5. Similarly, for r6, the z coordinate is equal to minus 1. We square it, z squared ends up being a positive 1, times 2, and this basis function has the value of a plus 2 at this point. So the overall EG vibration that corresponds to this basis function is minus R1, minus R2, minus R3, minus R4, plus 2R5, plus 2R6. So we can interpret this uh, function as saying that the uh, bonds R5 and R6 get bigger while the other four bonds get smaller and that the magnitude of the change is twice as big for R5 and R6 as it is for the first four vectors. Now, within the Kim method, we can evaluate the other partner of the EG irreducible representation by independently working with its basis function, which is x squared minus y squared. So again, we go through all the points R1 through R6 and evaluate the basis function with those coordinates. So we notice that R1 has an x value of 1. So 1 squared is also equal to 1. So again, the coefficient for R1 is a positive 1. For R2, the x coordinate is minus 1. So we square it, we get plus 1. So we have plus R2. Now for R3, the y coordinate is plus 1. So we have to evaluate it x squared minus y squared gives us a value of minus 1. So the coefficient of R3 is minus 1. And for R4, y is equal to minus 1. When we square it, we get plus 1. Multiplied by the minus 1 in front, the coefficient is a minus 1. Now notice, for points R5 and R6, their x and y coordinates are each equal to 0. It does have a non-zero z coordinate, but z doesn't, is not involved in the basis function. So if we evaluate the basis function at R5 and R6, we get coordinates of 0. So overall, we can write this particular vibration as R1 plus R2 minus R3 minus R4. So R1 and R2 get bigger, while as R3 and R4 get smaller during the vibration. Finally, last but not least, for the stretching motions, we have the triply degenerate T1U, irreducible representation. And this has three separate basis functions, x, y, and z. So first, let's evaluate 
just using the basis function x. So here, it's the simplest possible basis function. We simply look at the x-coordinate, and the magnitude of the x-coordinate is going to be the magnitude of the coefficient for the particular vector. So for r1, the x-coordinate is plus 1, so therefore the coefficient is plus 1. So that gives us r1. The point r2, the x-coordinate, is minus 1, so therefore we have minus r2. And notice that for points r3 through r6, the x-coordinates are all equal to 0, so therefore the coefficients are 0, and we're left with just the vibration being r1 minus r2. As r1 gets longer, r2 gets smaller. Similarly, the next basis function is y. So we look at the y-coordinate. For r1 and r2, the y-coordinate is equal to 0, so the coefficient would be 0, and we can simply ignore it. For r3, the y-coordinate is plus 1, so the coefficient is plus 1. For r4, the y-coordinate is minus 1, so the coefficient is minus 1. So we have r3 minus r4, and notice that for r5 and r6, since y is equal to 0, the coefficient would be 0, and we can simply omit it. The last basis function we have for the stretches is z. So we notice r1, r2, r3, and r4 all have z coordinates equal to 0, so the coefficients would be 0. r5 has a z coordinate of plus 1, so the coefficient is plus 1. For r6, the coordinate is minus 1, so the coefficient is minus 1. So we have, very quickly, all three partners of the T1U irreducible representation for the stretching normal mode of vibration for SF6. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one and tune in for part two to see the derivation of the bending motions for SF6.